Talk again. Testing one, two, three, four. What's that doing? Talk again. Yeah. What are, you, are we doing any better now? Can you get that? It's better. It's getting better. Well, I don't know what we need to do. Any ideas? It's better. I'm about 100% from my end. Can you feel okay? Testing one, two, three, four.
risen. The Lord is risen indeed. All right. Let us only confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have fallen too much to devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which you ought to have done. And we have done those things which you ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are committed. According to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant to us, merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. In the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Give you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please skip the right page and sing the night.
Father of orphans, defender of widows, God in his holy habitation. O oh God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, you sent a gracious rain, O oh God, upon your inheritance. You refreshed the land when it was weary. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. Ascribe power to God. His majesty is over Israel. His strength is in the skies. The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. When the Apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord.
The second reading is from the first letter of Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion in your, your adversary, the devil prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord.
So now, Father, glorify me in your, in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those who you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you. They have believed that you sent me. I am asking in their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. <coughs> All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but <coughs> they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect me.
There was a adult woman who had taken her older father to the doctor one day. And that evening when she came back and they were sitting at dinner with her teenage children there, she said to her, to them and to her mother and father, you know, children, something strange happened today, something I've never seen before. I actually saw your grandfather blush and get flustered a little bit. And the kids immediately wanted to know what had happened. And their grandfather was confused. He said, oh, it's nothing. And the daughter said, yeah, I think you need to tell them the story, Dad. And finally he said, okay, he would. As they got into the doctor's office that day, they had seen a lady sitting there, a nicely dressed older lady, looked like she's the same age as the grandfather. And all of a sudden, and they noticed her sitting there, but they were shocked, which all of a sudden she said, why, Sam Jackson, I never thought I'd see you again. How are you? Grandfather had to stop and think about who this was, and finally he said, Wait a minute, are you Marie? And she said, yes. They talked for a couple of minutes, and they finished by, by Marie saying to Sam, well, Sam, have you been looking at any stars lately? Like, Sam blushed and said no. So now the children had to know what the story was about looking at stars. So Sam told them, when he was a young man who had just left the Mennonite community in which he grew up, he moved to town, was trying to figure out how to navigate this new world in which he was living. And he was invited to go to a dance on Friday night. He'd never been to a dance, he didn't know what to do, but his friends assured him that they would help him, and he knew that if he was going to navigate into this world, he had to go and, go and do the things that were done in this world. So he goes to the dance, and he's standing there awkwardly, looking over the crowd, and this young one girl catches his eye. And he looks at her, and she looks at him, and then he looks away embarrassed. Finally, a few minutes later, one of his friends said, why don't you ask her to dance? And he said, well, I don't know how to dance. And he said, well, it'll be okay. She'll help me. So Sam mustered up his courage, went over and asked this young girl to dance. She said yes. They got out on the dance floor, but unfortunately, Sam was saying the truth when he said he didn't know how to dance. And all he did was step on her feet time and time again. Finally, she said, that's okay. Why don't we just go outside and look at the stars? So they went out onto the patio. They stood there, and Sam began looking up at the sky at the stars. The young girl kind of coughed, and Sam looked at the stars. He kind of even squeezed his hand, and he looked at the stars. Finally, she said to him, well, if all you're going to do while we're out here is look at the stars, I think I'll go back inside. The young woman, of course, is Marie, and Sam had learned a lot through the years. But it, it, it made sense to the children now why he blushed when she asked him if he'd been pleasing at the stars lately. And I think this is a story that really relates to the Ascension story because in the Gospel reading, it's almost the same. Jesus goes away, and the disciples stand there looking up at the stars, mouths open, trying to figure out what's going on. Totally clueless. And finally, two men in white or angels say, Why are you looking up the stars, men of Galilee? Why? And I think the answer to that question or that experience of it's time to come back to looking up the stars is at the heart of what ascension really means. Catherine of Siena is famous for saying, Jesus has no hands but ours, and there is no way for God's love to be known in the world except to us. What ascension is really all about is Jesus who goes to be with God in heaven so that he can fill all the earth with his presence, not just in the place where he is, but the disciples. But he will fill the earth with his presence, not with his own physical being, but through the work, the love, and the hands of those who follow him. Ascension is about us being prepared to become that physical presence of God in the world, to begin to share that love that we have experienced, that hope and that life that is different from anything we ever expected, to not just look up to the stars, but begin to bring Christ into the world in all this fullness, by word and by action. Let's think about it this week. When you see something that catches your eye, reminds you of Jesus, 
Don't just look up at the stars and gaze at them. Ask how it might lead you deeper into the truth. mystery of being the hands of Christ in the world. The fullness of God might be known among us. Amen. Now let us stand as we continue with the Apostles' Creed on page 9 of your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's be seated.
and Lord have when we put our Lord show us your mercy, love and mercy. We put our trust in thee. In you, Lord, is our hope. Now we 
joining the prayer of St. Christosco. Almighty God, you have given us grace in this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. You have promised to your one beloved Son that the two or three are gathered together in his name. You will be in the midst of them. Fill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come. 